Good evening, everybody. How are you? Oh, no, no, no. How are you? Too much food. Speak before you eat. Okay. I'd like to also welcome Corey to the team. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have a great time. Um, Parm's going to look back and say, why on earth did I get those two together? <laughs> so, but we're going to have a wonderful time, and I'm looking forward to working with Corey on our new adventure. So last year, I did a uh, take on one of Hamilton's songs in, in the room. Uh, at the spring briefing, I did a take on We Will Rock You using cybersecurity terms. Well, this year, I would like to give all credit to ChatGPT <laughs> and created a little limerick, compliments of ChatGPT. In cyberspace, we must be secure. For our critical infrastructure, that's for sure. Firewalls and encryption, protection is the mission, lest our systems fall prey to the lure. Okay. ICIT has had an exciting and productive year. February saw the publication of our first book through CRC Press, securing the nation's critical infrastructures, which is currently being used by policymakers, technology leaders, and educators around the nation. We held over two dozen boardroom meetings, webinars, and briefings, including last month's AIDC, attended by over 200 executives. We published over a dozen essays and reports, and as we look to the next year and our next decade, we are excited to build off this foundation to make a lasting, positive impact on the nation. I'm going to hurry this along because uh, the, the, the recipient of this award, his wife is 33 weeks pregnant. So we're going to move through this really quickly. So the, the, first, the Excellence in Action Award is awarded to an individual who has contributed to consequential national security programs and whose personal qualities make them an exceptional candidate for future high-profile leadership positions. The 2023 award goes to Harry Kreza. Harry is in the White House Office of the National Cybersecurity Director. He is, he's been there two years, 11 months, and he has come, he's a lecturer of international affairs from the George Washington University. He also captions, uh, he has a capstone course in defense and technology policy, graduate capstone course. He's a senior policy advisor with the Secretary, Office of the Secretary of Defense for policy advisor. He's also the United States Department of Defense for three years, and he's the Deputy Task Force Lead and Director for Emerging Technology for the Deputy Ta Task Force. He is also the U.S. Cyber Space Solarium Commission in Washington, D.C. He has a bachelor's degree from Grinnell College, a master's degree from Princeton University. His most recent publication was Cyber Social Contract how to Rebuild Trust in a Digital World, which was published in February 2022, and he also speaks fluent Chinese. I welcome to the stage, Harry Kressa. Thank you for that very kind introduction. Uh, I am indeed very humbled to be here tonight with so many August members of this community and deeply honored to be accepting this Excellence in Action Award. I'm also grateful for everything that ICIT and the community gathered here is doing to support our digitally enabled future. 
Uh, I have uh, indeed been fortunate to be present for a few banner years in cyber policy, uh, beginning at the Department of Defense. I had the privilege of working there when we uh, updated national authorities to incorporate cyber capabilities into our more traditional tools of uh, national statecraft. Uh, my colleagues and I joked that we might have been among the few offices at the Pentagon uh, keeping up on contemporary international relations literature, uh, but I also learned a tremendous amount while there about how to turn that literature and theory into reality from leaders like uh, General Paul Nakasone and Deputy Assistant Secretary Ed Wilson. But it was helping set up the, the hunt forward enterprise and with mentors like Madeline Mortelmans and Mika Oyang there that I learned the, the most important part of cyber policy and that is the human element. Uh, we were tasked with traveling the world with cyber command hunt teams and helping persuade foreign governments that we had spent decades urging to never let anyone onto your networks to, well, maybe just let us onto your networks just this once. Uh, and, uh, but to do that, uh, that hunt mission together, to learn from each other and how we approach these things together, and to combine our different perspectives, the, uh, the American sort of global threat perspective with our foreign partners, local experts, expertise so that we could together develop more insights into the capabilities and intent of adversaries and, uh, and cyber criminals than we could have possibly been able to have done if we had tried to come at this separately. But that took a lot of trust building. It took a lot of talking through Technolo technological baggage, geopolitical baggage, and wearing our humility on our sleeve about what all we had figured out about cyberspace and what yet we had to learn. And that humility helped build that trust and uh, that shared sense of purpose that was necessary to do more together than we could have done separately. Uh, and I took those lessons with me to the Cyberspace Solarium Commission and then the Office of the National Cyber Director uh, to uh, help stand up this, uh, this renewed effort toward, uh, toward strengthening the, the defenses of our critical infrastructure and uh, securing the foundations of our, our digital lives. But also while there, I got to enjoy learning from people like Chris Inglis and Kimba Walden as they sought, us, they sought to uh, encourage us to reach further, to focus more on the affirmative side of that cyber equation and think about what kind of agenda we would want to have stretching beyond stopping adversaries from trying to hurt us. A few moments ago, Corey, a, a mentor to many, mentioned how critical it is that the blessings of our digital opportunity need to become more equitably shared. Uh, I think so too must be our burdens in this space. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to contribute in a small way to the uh, President's National Cybersecurity Strategy, which calls on us to rebalance the responsibility for cyber defense onto the shoulders of those who are most capable of bearing it and reversing that trend in our digital ecosystem of devolving risk downward onto individuals, small businesses, and local governments. This dose of cyber populism, uh, further inspired by what Director Easterly has called uh, corporate cyber responsibility, is overdue but exhilarating. Uh, it's an exciting time in American economic and industrial policy as our country adopts a uh, new, more ambitious set of visions for what we want our digital ecosystem to be able to accomplish for us and what our critical infrastructure of the future should look like. And all of it is going to be built atop a more inherently digital digitally native foundation. So I'm grateful to be part of that optimistic agenda and to be collaborating with institutions like ICIT and the community here to turn that, uh, that uh, more ambitious and forward-looking digitally enabled future into a reality. So thank you.